Go is really simple and thus easy, right? Except when you run into some of its pitfalls where it becomes very weird to use it and very quirky. And I'd like to show you some of them to make you go, what? Um, but first, I'm Josh. I work as an, as an SRE for Red Hat. I'm a maintainer of package operator. My router is running NixOS, and of course it chokes on IPv6. Um, I have a big, big side project playground graveyard, and I'm a master procrastinator. Uh, that goes that far that I um, started drawing this procrastination monkey instead of working on the slides today in the morning in the hotel. And then I drew another one. And yeah, but that's not the only thing I procrastinated around this talk. Enough talking about me though. Let's talk about Go instead. Um, this talk does not really contain anything original. So deferring errors or error handling in defers. Assume you'll, you, you have a function that does some IO, opens a file, and then after you open the file handle, you defer fclose. Of course you do, everybody does it, right? But what? If after close returns an error, it, it can. And what happens? Um, let's write some tests. So this is the same function I just showed you, but wrapped up in a test, where I assert that, um, oh, actually it's not. Actually, I already tried to handle the error. And I create an error variable outside, and then instead of deferring the after close, I defer a function closure where I try to you shove the error that I get back into the error variable, and then I return that on the outside. Like this is where I shove it out into this place. But that doesn't really work. So the test fails, and that is because the go spec says um, it doesn't work because the return statement already initializes the return values before deferrals run. Let's try using a named return instead. So named returns are, wait, how does it work? Are I can give my return value a name here, and then I try to shove it again out, and then we assert if th that this thing is equal. Does that work? Yeah, it does. That's very nice. But what if the outer function already encountered an error, put it into the error place, and then the deferred function also encounters an error. This is a test that has this uh, behavior. Oh. Um, so here I shove a de predefined deferred error into the error. And then after, after deferring that closure, I put an error that I actually encounter as well. And then I return it. What happens? the closure will override the other thing, and then it, the error is not what you expected. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about occasions when nil is not really nil in Go. So given this function that returns an io.writer interface, and inside I initialize a variable um, pointing to a struct that actually implements this interface, but I do not put anything there. So it's a, just a nil pointer to a struct. So if I add a check, writer equals nil, what will this check return? It will say true, because it's the same thing to do, right? Okay, now let's use this function. Let's call it, put the result in n, and then do the same check again. What will this then do? It will return false. What? What? That shouldn't be the case, right? Let's talk about, talk about something else. Short variable declarations eagerly declare but fall back to shadowing, at least in some cases. Short variable declarations are these things where you don't need to write var. You, ju you can just immediately assign something to the variable you declared. Given a function, tuplerator where I pass in two variables and I just return them plainly. I can use a comma b colon equals 
the function, and then I get A13 and B37. If I try to do, you, uh, to do that again, it doesn't work. The compiler won't let me. It will say everything on the left side has already been declared. There is nothing new. Well, if I create a new scope, then it'll let me do that. So inside the scope, A will be 4 and B will be 2. And after the scope ended, A and B will be their original values again because they were shad shadowed. If I just use one new variable in the same scope, I can do that again. And funnily enough, A now changes. It's not shadowed, it's actually reassigned. Yeah, that's really weird. And if I try to do the same thing with a nested scope, then inside the nested scope, A is 4, B is 37, and the new uh, variable C is 2, as you would expect. But afterwards, A reverts back to 13, and B reverts back to 37, or B has never been changed. Yeah, that's really weird, right? Let's talk about the stuff from earlier again. So what actually happens when the close errors? Yeah, the cake is a lie. I don't really know, and no one does. The man page for close says, I'll read that out to you. A careful programmer will check the return value of close since it is quite possible that errors on a previous write operation are reported only in the final close that releases the open file description. Failing to check the return value when closing a file may lead to silent loss of data. And then later on it proceeds to say, a careful programmer who wants to know about I.O. errors may proceed close with a call to fsync. Who does that? I have never seen code that does that. <coughs> yeah, we should probably all be sticking to databases and folks who actually know how to store data properly on a disk. And by the way, it is possible to wrap multiple errors. So in the deferred error case, you can actually have a somewhat convoluted error handler in the deferred function where I have an error outside. I also encounter an error inside the deferred function. And then I can check if both are nil, uh, if both are not nil. And then I can wrap the outside error, or I can replace the outside error with something that wraps both of the errors. And then afterwards, errors.is is true for both of them. But you would need to check that, obviously, and you would need to write a lot of code in your code bases to do that. These are some interesting, interesting references, of which I stole most of the stuff in the, uh, in the talk. I, um, yeah, R really nothing original was there. I hope you had fun enjoying or uh, you enjoyed being watted a bunch of times. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the rest of DEF CON. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Oh, you mean um, slices are mutable, immutable, but not, oh, sorry. Right. Um, wait, I, I just have to repeat the question. So um, you ask uh, about the case where I can effectively have two slices pointing to the same underlying array yes. and then so mutate. Oh, okay. So you um, you draw a picture where you assign to the same same slice reference from two Go routines. Yeah, yeah that's um, that's a no no in Go. Slices are not concurrency safe. That's right. I sadly do not have anything more prepared to present to you, but if you catch me in person, you can ask me. Or you can ask my doppelganger, who apparently checked in at the hotel to uh, the breakfast and checked e even checked my room number. So <laughs> maybe you'll find him. I didn't. Thank you.